Have you ever wondered who has the best dreadlocks on the internet? Well, this series is gonna help you out. Let's get into it. Gotta represent and give it up for the ginger dreads out there. He may just be the ginger dread man. There's something about ginger hair that is captivating. And I think it's because they're such a rare breed of humans. This dude here definitely looks like he's mixed. Black and white. Obviously someone being ginger in his family, maybe both his parents. But you don't actually really see too many mixed people with ginger dreads in entirety. Now what I like about this dude's locks is that we can see that they're clearly free-formed. Lots of flat spots, you know, but his hair is actually really thick. It's got some Congos growing in at the back as well. What more can I really say? These are just legendary. Super legendary locks. And I don't really have much more to say about these. I think that they're, they're looking good. They're probably about four, five, six years in. At this point, they're tied back in a natural ponytail, just using his locks to kind of keep them in an updo, which is the best part about having long locks. You can manage them and style them with your locks as the accessory themselves. No need for hair ties anymore. Moving on next. I have a feeling that this dude is in the rock band Bad Brains. I love his shirt. It says Got Dread or Got Dreads. We know that here at the Not Nation, 99% of us do have dreads over here. And now why would these locks come up? as the best freeform locks ever. Look at the size of them. The thickness of these locks. They're insane. He's got them tied together with sweatbands of the Rasta kind, the best kind, that red, green, and gold. What's intriguing to me about these locks is the fact that they're so smooth. There's no frizzy hair wrapped around them at all. It's just smooth locks. This does take a long time to get to this point. Maybe it's just his hair type being a type four. The loose hair show up differently on these types of locks. The loose hair here shows up more as dreadlock balls or woolies opposed to loose hair kind of falling or wrapping around the lock. These locks have some, some age and some history to them. What we can really see in this photo is the fact that his new growth is coming in a different color than the matured locks. The matured locks are, are a brown faded from the sun bleaching. His new growth is a pepper, salt and pepper color because he's starting to go a little gray. Hence the beard we can see as well. A lot of his locks on the front of his head seem to have broken and they're not coming in as thick as the Congos at this point either. But definitely some mad dedication for him to get to this point. It takes a lot of commitment to do this. And I definitely feel like he's got some of the best freeform locks ever for his patience. Patience is such a big deal when, we have, when dealing with freeform locks and wanting to grow locks in general that are long. You gotta be patient. And for those of you that aren't patient enough, the impatient folk, well, they go ahead and they get extensions put in. Cheating the journey along the way. But dreadlocks are actually here to teach us a lot more about ourselves and life's lessons than they are as just a, a fashion statement. And when people wear them as just as a fashion statement, there's, there's a lot of lessons to be skipped out on that you might not necessarily learn in life. This is why it's more of a spiritual, personal journey than just a fashion journey. Dreadlocks have a lot more heart to them than what meets the eye for a lot of people. Now, this isn't a real photo, but this does represent why dreadlocks are the best hairstyle ever. Looking at this photo, 
at this painting, I should say, we see beautiful, thick, long locks growing out of this female's head, interpreted as a transition into tree roots or branches. Not really sure which one it's kind of portraying there, but essentially, to me, it looks like branches of the tree. And it's a sign that freeform locks can really bring you back to our roots of nature. This is the meaning of one love, loving everything as one. And notice the birds, the hummingbird and the chickadees chilling in their hair. To me, this is a sign of union. This is a sign of unconditional love always returning back to our roots and returning to nature and being one with nature it's important and this is a lesson that's taught beyond the fashion sense of traditional locks this is something that is more embraced when the freeform lock journey back to oneself is what allows us to move day in day out and not worrying about how our hair looks every morning or fixating on certain areas of our hair that isn't growing the way we want it to. Just like a tree's branches grow un ununiformed with no restrictions, this is how our freeform locks are to grow as well. Bomba! Not sure of the exact religious anecdotes of these men. Clearly Rasta, but of what division, I'm not too sure. Whether it's Nyabingi or something else. But these two Rasta elders really show us the dedication that it takes to growing the best freeform locks ever. And I'm saying it. I'm saying that this man has some of the best freeform locks ever, even as a balding dread. Because he knows the fact of growing his locks out till the wheels fall off has a greater meaning than any sort of updo or dreadlock hairstyle just to appease a vanity standpoint. What I love about these locks here is the thickness, is the color. I love that they've lost their color and turned white and then turned to a tinge of yellow. And I've seen this happen firsthand in Jamaica with a lot of different dreads and it's always fascinated me the most. It stands out the most seeing hair like this. And when you don't understand locks in general, it looks and feels like a dirty way of life. But in all, in all actuality, this man's beard and locks can be just as clean as anybody else's hair because he's got access to fresh water enriched with minerals and access to fresh plants such as aloe vera to condition and cleanse his hair on a regular basis in the islands. It's just the sun that changes the color to what it is now over the years. So this tinge of yellow is actually a great sign of dedication that he's been at it for far longer than most people. And we can see how flat his locks are in the back of his head as well. Opposed to his counterpart here, much younger looking fellow, his beard hasn't turned white yet, but you see the salt and pepper look kind of coming into play. His hat is what's really captivating here. Personally, I've never owned a Tam in such shape or style. I would love to try one on. They're not really popular here in North America, but in Jamaica amongst the Rastas, you see this a lot. I think they're made out of leather, which obviously I don't support wearing a leather hat. But I'm not sure of the exact materials they are using in this case. 
And I'm really interested to see what that man's locks look like underneath the hat. Because they've got to be super long to fit in a hat that big. And I'll be honest, it's hats like this that got me into wanting to grow really long dreadlocks because of the size of the hats that are made to accommodate such locks. And lastly here for the best of freeform locks episode 1, we got a couple that dreads together. And they're looking fantastic. The lady here on the left looking like freeform locks although she has added some bleach and some color into here. So she's not keeping the natural color of her locks. But I like the way that she's wrapped them up. Very sparringly, kind of loosely in a fabric and a string. It looks like her hairline actually starts back a little bit further than most. Now this might be a sign of just having her locks for so long. Maybe the weight of them has kind of pulled her hairline back a little bit. Not really too sure. But I do love the style of her head wrap that she's got going on there. She's got more of some thinner locks. And the ends, they're very loose and wispy. There's no bluntage at, at all going on down there. As for her boyfriend here, or her husband, her, her mandum. Freeform locks coming in super wild. Thick congos are happening. There's no separation. He's just embracing that freeform. And we do notice the dreadlock balls, the woolies, forming, and that is the loose hair. These will fall off in time. Some of them might dread into the lock back into itself. It can kind of go either direction. But one thing is for sure, dreadlocks do break over time. So when it starts to happen to you, I wouldn't be too concerned because it's like tree branches. You know, they sway in the wind, some bust and break and snap. But it's all part of being in tune with Mother Nature once again. So don't freak out if you see a lock thinning out. And I guess it's, it's only time to worry if you're literally losing like a lot of big chunks of hair at once. Then there's something detrimental going on to your health. But for little dread balls and woolies like this, I wouldn't even worry about it. It's all part of the game. It's, it really is. So that's it for today's episode of the best dreadlocks, the best freeform dreadlocks. Uh, I will do another episode next week. And I would love to just hear what your comments are. So let me know down below how you're feeling today. What are your plans for the new years? And what is your lock expiration in 2022? I'm signing out. It's not locked. It's that guy. And I'll see you in the next video. I'm gone. Now, I do appreciate you guys watching this video, this content, being a part of the Not Nation family. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this video, and I'll definitely see you guys in the next episode coming out next week. If you got the best dreadlocks ever and you want to share them for this montage, send me a DM, post it over on reddit.com slash r slash Not Nation, or hit me up on Instagram, Not Nation. See you guys.